Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. So the choices we make today can and will determine the kind of health we're going to have. And that's great news, because the choices we make, those are up to us. Nobody else can make choices for you. You have to take responsibility for your health and for your life. So no one else is going to do it. You have to jump in and make it happen. That's a good thing, though. So when you think about the foods you eat every single day, what kind of foods are you eating? It's funny. I talked to someone the other day that just knew they needed to have a lifestyle change. They, they're starting to take a bunch of medications. They've hit that point in life where they, they see their body breaking down. You get in your late 40s, early 50s, things start happening. You start saying, what happened? <laughs> and you think it's what you did six months ago, but really it's what you've been doing over about a decade of time. Decades usually deliver certain aspects and avenues of health. So you want to look at your habits. So the daily things that you do, the stress that you manage or that you put yourself in or the foods that you eat on a regular basis or maybe the exercise that you get or don't get, all of these play a role. They're your habits, your relationships, the people you hang out with, toxins in the environment. Are they around you? Are they in you? Are they in a, are you living in an area that's highly toxic? I mean, all of that really does matter and it plays a role with our health. And the choices you make with that are what's going to determine everything. Everybody wants to hang their hat on genetics. You know, what grandma and grandpa passed down? Not so much. Not so much. It's more about lifestyle. And really, it is. I mean, the CDC has even done confirmed studies that shows us about 80 to 85 percent of the root cause of most health challenges is due to emotional health, environmental health. And we can really control so much of that and make an impact but it's up to us you can't just let life happen you got to make it happen so that's the key triple eight two eight three seven two seven two twenty five million u.s adults now struggle with pain on a daily basis so pain clinics have popped up all over the country and the medical boards have really begun to regulate those more than ever as they should because a lot of times medications are given or people pose themselves to get the medications is probably a better way to put it to get the medications when they really don't need them. So it's a widespread condition, though, in America. More than 25 million adults are suffering on a a daily basis. This is a new national survey, but 14 million adults, roughly 6.4%, experience severe pain, which can be associated with poor health and disability. Though other national studies of chronic pain have yielded similar results. But what's interesting is is that when they looked at this, they found that about 54 million adults, nearly one quarter reported mild pain that wasn't incapacitating, but they deal with it on a daily basis. So pain's a big deal. And about one third of adults have uh, some kind of joint related pain in a given year, which is really interesting. And one in 10 adults experience a lot of pain at the highest level, one a 10 out of 10 on a scale. So the American College of Rheumatology actually did some guidelines looking at some natural ways to support people that deal with pain from an evidence-based perspective. Now, there's cognitive behavioral counseling that can go on with the pain, but they found some natural methods that are pretty simple, like acupuncture. And I can tell you that acupuncture is an amazing tool. Chinese medicine been around for a long time, and now which I'm excited to see that it's being so widely accepted and utilized within our medical profession now that it's it's becoming very commonplace but also tai chi has been used a lot for arthritis a lot of people that struggle with these type of joint aches and pains the tai chi can help a lot and also yoga has been very helpful with that now all the pain opioids that are used on a regular basis like vicodin and oxycontin percocets the the basics they have a role for sure and if you've ever been a high level of pain maybe post-surgery or through an injury, you know how beneficial those medications can be. But when you get hooked on those, that's when it becomes quite the challenge. So again, with with pain, you've got to look at the root cause of the pain. Is it arthritis? Is it rheumatoid arthritis? Is it due to an injury? Is it a nerve-related condition? Because those can be quite serious and, and demand a lot more attention. But you've got to figure out if you really do need the medications or not. And And I think with with this more of a self-analysis and then along with your physician working with you, you should be able to figure out how well your body's going to do or not do with it. 
And there's a lot of natural alternatives out there. I'll tell you this a lot. And American Pharmacy Company has put together, which I'm pretty amazed at. They've got a, an all-natural cream that's, that's fantastic for supporting the body. And their pharmacists compound them. And it's an all-natural cream. Helps with a lot of things like neuropathy. It deals with migraine headaches. There's a lot of certain pain conditions that they have this. And they send it right to your door. All insurance is accepted. It's really neat to see how they do things. There's also some natural products as well. Uh, Amino Active is a really good company. But when you when you get down to it and you look at someone that deals with chronic pain, you want to look at their overall lifestyle, their eating habits, because foods create a pretty solid amount of inflammation in the body. And if you deal with chronic levels of inflammation or chronic levels of pain, there can be some situations where those levels can be some of the root causes and some of the reasons that you're struggling with quite a bit of pain. So you want to look at your eating habits. If somebody struggles with that, you know, alongside this study, eating habits, if you're eating a bunch of junk food, processed food, refined carbohydrates, breads, pasta, cereals, crackers, doing a lot of juices and sodas, a lot of high sugar content foods, then it can flare up inflammation in a great way. If you go to our website, you will find quite a few options there and some great articles on pain and and really what can happen and what the inflammation cascade, what it really does, and then what to do about it. There's a lot of great information. But, yeah, one of the keys you've got to look at is your overall lifestyle habits when you're dealing with pain. It really is. Because the, you can't rely so much on the clinics and the pain meds. Although they're helpful and they could be a good Band-Aid, you've got to look at the overall cause of why the body starts having the pain in the first place and then build a plan around it. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. On whatever you're struggling with, we're here to help. doesn't matter. So if you have diabetes, arthritis, fibromyalgia, you need to lose 30 pounds, whatever it is. Remember, if the body can get sick, you can also get well. It is about lifestyle and the choices we make each and every day. That's what determines the kind of health we're going to have. It really, really does. Amazing. We've got Paul in Palm Beach says that for the last few weeks, I've had muscle spasms in my eyes. What can cause this? You know, it's funny, Paula, when when we were in medical school, the, it, it, the doctor came out one time. He was one of our instructors, and he said, how many of you in here, your eyelids twitch? And, and, and it was so funny because it's a random question. And three quarters of the room, including myself, raised their hand. <laughs> Everybody's eyelids are twitching, and no one ever talked about it. It's because calcium gets depleted in the body with high levels of stress, high levels of caffeine, which a lot of people are using. I drink a lot of green tea. And so in high levels of caffeine, you deplete calcium. And so if you're not eating enough vegetables, then, or if you're not getting enough calcium from whatever sources, then it can cause quite an issue with that. So that's one thing to look at. It's your calcium levels and vitamin D, which is the carrier for a lot of that and locking in your minerals. So you might want to get a vitamin D test and check your calcium. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. Check us out on the web. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, all this nutrition and, and lifestyle-based care we talk about. We get all kinds of emails and, and, of course, calls about that. Just go to the website. You can check it out there. We've got a team of people growing all around the country, a network of professionals that can help you really go to that next level with your health and with your life. Let's go to the phones and talk to Nathan. Hi, Nathan. I am on dialysis. I'm blind. And I'm losing blood because of my kidneys. I have a non-traumatic hematoma. So what do I do to build my blood? I'm at a 7.7, .7 and I really 
am in need of help. They want me to get a blood transfusion. I do not want to do that. I've had that already. I don't want to do another one. When you're in that situation, Nathan, I know it's challenging. You're if you don't have someone working with you on a nutrition plan, you need to get someone. Okay. And I know it's a tough place to be. Uh, I, I really appreciate your, your enthusiasm to get well, right? Your enthusiasm to, to make something happen, to not, not just sit back and take it, to be wise in your choices, which is what you're doing. And I think that if you can get a good nutritionist, dietitian, or a physician that, that specializes in nutrition to guide you and lay out a plan for you, I think it's one of the best things you could do right now because the kidneys are in, in such a they're, – they're so volatile when they start getting weaker, but yet there's a lot you can do to support the body to keep it strong too. Okay, so I don't want you to lose hope in the matter. I want you to definitely stri- keep your mindset like it is. It, it sounds like you got a really good mindset for it. Okay, and and one of the things you want to look at, and again, your nephrologist is going to need to okay everything because they're the ones kind of in charge at this point, and rightfully so. That's their specialty. But having someone that understands more of an integrative approach for nutritional methods to support the body is going to be helpful. Now, I would ask and research a couple of things. Juniper berries, which are, of course, they're, they're very, very tasty, but they're hard to find. But juniper berries actually have regenerative properties for the kidneys, okay? And that's an alternative medical uh, theory. It's not some proven fact, but it's been used for years and years and years to support kidney function. And then also, you definitely want to look at cayenne pepper. There is some research out there about cayenne pepper and how it's supportive to the kidneys as well. So all those can be beneficial. Remember, foods have power to heal in so many different ways. So getting the right kind of foods in can make a big difference in this case. For sure. Now, the transfusion is a tough one, and and I wouldn't want to get another one either. I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, it's just going to depend on your levels, and you know, ways to get your levels up are going to be based on your nutrition. That's the only ammunition you've got to rebuild, and cells are only going to, the red blood cells are only going to form and regenerate and replenish at a certain rate. You can't speed the rate up, per se. Right, because the body does it in its in its own manner, in its own way. So you you have to kind of stick to that. That's why I would you know again if I would get multiple opinions and I would get them out of a different group. Now the challenge is most of the times when you're trained in any specialty, the same schools and the same boards train you with the same philosophy. So that's what makes it a little bit on the challenging side is everybody kind of sings the same song, so to speak. But I would still look out and reach out to find some different opinions and maybe you'll get a different viewpoint but at the end of the day you're going to have to replenish what's not there and at the end of the day if the kidneys are dropping in function you want to make sure you you're doing things from a nutritional standpoint every day that that matters and that counts and and don't let that you know scare you because it shouldn't it's just you need to be proactive and and take charge of it that's it and just know that everything you put in your mouth counts like whenever you get down to a, a health challenge at this level, you've got to remember that every move counts, every thought counts, everything you do counts. And so you want to have that mindset of a winner and go and make sure you're doing everything you can to support the body as well as you can. Okay, But keep us posted on how things go. That's for sure. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call or go to the website. If you haven't found our app yet, go to the app store. It's easy to download. It's free. It goes to your phone. It's an easy way to catch the show 24-7. We play the show from the day before until we go live the next day. So it's a great way to be connected with us there. And then the other tip that's really great is you can ask a question on the app. If you click the little red button on the app, you can actually ask your question. And it sends it right to us, and we can plug it in here on the show. It's a great tool. A lot of people are using that now to stay connected with us. Let's go to Mary. Hi, Mary. I'm calling. I'm a diabetic, and recently the doctor has seen a lot of protein in my urine, and it's causing perhaps a little damage with my organs. And I would like to know what can I do to correct Well, to correct them, there's a couple things. First, you've got to figure out how well your body's breaking down the foods you're eating. 
and and there's some additional testing that can be done, which your physician can do. But you want to find out if there is protein, where where the challenges are. Usually it comes from the kidneys is where the issue is. And you just want to figure that out. And you've also got to look at your overall nutritional patterns. So you want to look at and have someone break down for you the food you're eating. See, nutrition is an entire field into itself. It's not just go eat some broccoli and some chicken and everything will be fine. You really have to get someone that knows what they're doing so they can evaluate it from a nutritional perspective using lab work, finding out exactly, pinpointing what systems are working well in your body, which ones are not. It's it's all basic principles in lifestyle medicine to be able to come up with an overall game plan that will help. I mean, that's where you have to go with it. That's extremely important. So I would have someone look into that with you because protein in the urine yeah it's a kidney issue but what's causing that the root cause stepping all the way back to look in through that and that's that's where the answers lie so you'll be able to connect someone will be able to connect the dots and you can lay out a better plan for eating you can also support the kidneys with certain cofactors we talk about this on the website that can allow the kidneys to function at a higher level and, of course, break the proteins down much better. Coming up, more questions about your health. Give us a call, 888-283-7272. I'm going to talk about anti-aging when we come back. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, it's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz. find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. You can always, always go to the website. By the way, I'll help you go to that next level with your health and your life. Parents are now putting a lot of food pressure on their kids, a new study finds. So if we weren't putting enough pressure on our kids to play sports and do their activities, now we're putting it on them for food. New research finds that overweight kids are more likely to restrict their, their uh, children's food intake so parents will come in and cut back on the food. And in contrast, what happens is mothers and fathers are saying are more likely to pressure their kids to eat more when both parents and children are at normal weight. So pushing food nor restricting is a good idea. A new study author, uh, Jessica Burge, is an associate professor of family medicine and community health at the University of Minnesota uh, Medical School. Interesting, they said that prior research has shown that they may have unintended effects such as child becoming overweight or obese or engaging in eating behavior disorders like binging or purging. Childhood obesity now is close to 17% and is linked to another health issues, including type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Can you believe that under the age of 11, we're seeing kids with heart disease and type 2 diabetes? I'm just shocked at that, amazed, blown away that we can have our young people dealing with such... High adult, I mean, we're talking adult health challenges that don't even start really occurring until you get in your late 40s, 50s. And we're seeing our kids deal with this. It's because of our lifestyle habits, about the choices that they're making each day. So there has to be a shift and there has to be a change, no doubt about it. And until we do that as parents, nothing's going to happen, which is just, you know, you don't really want to 
create a bunch of drama around the food. But I think that parents, if we lead by example, then the kids will follow. Most kids don't sit there and stuff their face. Most kids will eat their plate, and that's about it. A little bit, grab a little bit more. You got a guy playing, you know, growing up, getting his early teenage years playing football. He's growing, playing wrestling, playing sports. He may jump in to eat a lot more. A female that's getting into sports, tennis, basketball, volleyball, whatever, which it really increases their aerobic activity, a lot of running, then they may increase their calories too. But at the same time, you don't see people, you don't see kids go to a, to a, a big buffet and sit down for two hours and eat eight plates. You just don't see that. So the kids aren't wired to do that. They're, they're, they're not geared like that. And unless there's something emotional going on or there's something that they feel out of control with, because food is a way of control. It's a way that people use. That's why the addictive behavior begins. And it's, it's a way of whether they're into, into like a, a binging or a purging or, or any kind of issue with kind of being in, in that situation. I mean, anorexia and bulimia, one of these eating disorders, you're just seeing them. I, it gets me frustrated because I see so many kids that struggle with this, and they don't need to. I mean, there's so much pressure from family, and there's also a lot of peer pressure, obviously, that can lead to this. Most of the eating disorders, although we, we say that there's a, a distorted body image, a lot of that distorted body image came from a lot of the verbal cues at an early age from the parents. So it's not just that the kid just randomly has body issues. That came from somewhere because kids don't just randomly start having that. Or they, they, they watch movies and they feel like they don't look the same as certain models or, or actors or actresses, whatever. I mean, it's, it comes from a lot of that. But the reality is as parents, we need to step in and, and be the difference maker in that and be the one that steps up and tells our kid how great they are, how beautiful they are, how smart they are. So that they're getting that from home from really the parents at that, at that level are the highest level of validation for a child. So it does matter. And when you start seeing something like this, when you see these food pressures, the last thing kids need to be is pressured for anything. You want to lay boundaries, no doubt, as a parent, and you want to guide and you want to lead. But they don't need to feel the pressure for that. They need to understand the why. And that can help them more than anything else, especially when it comes to weight. Weight is one of the biggest outlets for people. I mean, look at the adults around you. 70% of Americans are overweight. And that's not because you're eating less. It's because we're eating more. It's because we're stress eating. There's a lot of reasons of why that happens. But it's really interesting how it does happen and what we can do to really make a shift to move around from that. And we need that for our kids. Definitely need it. 888-283-7272. That's 888 888- Two eight three seven two seven two. Give us a call. And if you haven't found our lifestyle providers, our lifestyle providers are healthcare providers in your area that believe the same way we do. They just take you by the hand. And if you want to figure out how to eat better, how to exercise in the right way for your body type, learn more about your metabolism and how to construct an overall plan around that, that's what our lifestyle providers do. They help build a good game plan. Sometimes that's all you need. You just need a game plan. So many of us need that. All right, let's go to Ken. Hi, Ken. Welcome. I am plagued with autoimmune disorders. I had developed about three years ago a disorder of the gums on my teeth, and it's uh, the inflammation and stuff that supposedly affects my heart, as well as uh, about a year and a half ago, I developed psoriasis on my scalp and on my arms and on one spot on my leg. And those are the, the issues I'm having. When you start having a lot of those types of issues, you always want to step back. Okay, you always want to step back and really get down to the brass tacks. What I mean by that is you want to jump in and make sure more than anything else, you don't have any serious nutritional deficiencies. A lot of times with an autoimmune condition or several of them, there can be challenges in those regards. So you want to dig in and really figure that out. So the way you do that is first you get some lab work with your primary care physician. I think it's a great way to go. You can look at nutritional values all day long. Now, they can look at certain tests that can determine whether your T1 helper cells or T2 helper cells, which part of your immune system is what we call overactive, okay? And when things are overactive, that's when you start getting a lot of challenges with the overall immune system, and that's where you get the autoimmune process from. 
So just figuring out exactly where that's coming from will make a big difference. And that's one thing I would stick to. I would definitely figure that out because if, if once they do that, you can target certain foods to be able to help. You don't have to just kind of stay where you are. You can really get in there and the doctors can jump in and help come up with a good game plan. I, I would definitely look into that because when you're struggling with any type of situation that's autoimmune, you have to get the immune system calmed down and you can't just turn it off. You can't just go unplug the light or unplug the lamp per se. You can put a dimmer switch on it, which can help, but you can't just go over there and unplug everything. That's what you don't want to do. Okay. Triple eight, two, eight, three, seven, two, seven, two. That's triple eight, two, eight, three, seven, two, seven, two. Give us a call or go to the website. Our food of the hour. I want to talk about beets. Beets are amazing. You're thinking, my goodness, the last thing I want to eat is a bunch of beets. But, you know, I, I really actually seek them out now to put them in my diet because they've got so many healthy benefits to them. Food could be our best medicine in so many ways. Pretty amazing. So one, again, is high on the anti-cancer scale. They have zero trans fat, zero saturated fat. And, of course, they they're fantastic at supporting the digestive tract. Matter of fact, one of the best foods, if you struggle with constipation at all, beets are one of the best foods. Just the beet juice alone is enough to get the small intestine and the bowels moving to the point where you can eliminate well, even if you've been constipated for a while. So if that's something you struggle with, constipation, that you deal with on a regular basis, you want to look in this for sure because they're, they're, they're amazing. If you take a regular beet, steam it, I'll tell you a little trick. Take a regular beet, steam it, cut it up and put it over a salad the night before you wake up in the morning and of course have a great bowel movement it works like a charm the reason is they contain high levels of sodium the main minerals that are really good for our bowels which are sodium and then of course potassium calcium and magnesium so they contain all of those plus they're considered a strong fiber food got a lot of vitamin a and vitamin c in it too so they contain folic acid, which is necessary for the production and maintenance of new cells. I mean, they've got it's great for cell reproduction and for the body making new cells each and every day. And studies shown that beets guard against cancer, especially the big studies were done with colon cancer. A lot of medical studies done around it, but beets can be eaten raw or you can boil them, whatever you want to do. But they're powerful. I mean, that's the key. One thing you've got to know is 1.5 percent of Americans actually eat fruit and vegetables. And that's pretty staggering to think about it. Because if, if I had to take a poll right now with everybody listening, and I said, who all eats vegetables every single day? You'd probably raise your hand. You'd probably tweet and, and start sending messages all the way about that. And the reality is that we all think we do. But if you really looked at our plates in a, a day's time over and over and over again, really we don't that much. So making those kind of shifts and changes can make a big difference. But beets are great. They, of course, I should I encourage you to use them on a regular basis just because of the beta cyanin, which is a pigment. It gives you that red color. It's what's responsible for help for helping fight cancer. So a lot of people take beets and put it in, in juices or they'll juice it along with kale and some other things. I think beets should be thrown in there every time just because of the high anti-cancer load that they have. I mean, that's something right there that's enough to be valued and looked at that can help it's one of those super vegetables that we should always include in our diet plan on a regular basis coming up more questions about your health you're listening to on call radio check us out on the web we're here for you on call for you each and every day to take you to the next level remember lifestyle is our medicine the foods we drink the air we breathe the water we drink the exercise we get or don't get all of that composes our lifestyle it matters did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at inshapenetwork.com. Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. You can give us a call or 
check out one of our lifestyle providers, healthcare providers in your area that believe the same way we do. All this shape and lifestyle-based care that we talk about. Powerful. Now, exercise has been touted as some great medicine. And, and of course, I always think exercise is a form of medicine. But now for our regular heartbeats, we call them atrial fibrillation or AFib. They're saying that exercise may be some of the best medicine for that that we've ever thought. A lot of times when you had AFib, doctors would say to avoid too much exercise as it put too much strain and stress on the heart. But now exercise appears to help control an irregular heartbeat more than we thought. They did some studies in Australia, and they call it cardiorespiratory fitness. And with the cardiorespiratory fitness refers to the ability of the heart and the lungs to supply oxygen to the body during sustained physical activity. So the study adds it to a growing body of evidence that aggressive risk factor management with increased physical activity should be an integral component, they say, of the management of AFib. So it's the most common abnormal heart rhythm. Okay, It affects about 2.7 million Americans. And according to the American Heart Association, obesity and inactivity are the risk factors for AFib, which can lead to a stroke, which is very, very concerning. And matter of fact, a lot of people that struggle with this, they've done studies, and they say if you have a, base, a body mass index of 27 or more, meaning they were overweight or obese, you're a high-risk category for an AFib. Even if you've never dealt with it before. So they looked at this, and what, I'll tell you one of the greatest nutritional components to support this are fruits and vegetables. It's so simple. Fruits and veggies. I mean, I'm telling you, it, it solves so much. I could just sit here on the show and talk about fruits and vegetables, seriously. Because 1.5% of Americans are eating them. That means that, my goodness, 98.5% of Americans are not. And we could do a whole show on fruits and veggies. That's it. And, I mean... Why are we not doing it? It's convenience for the most part. A lot of people don't like the taste of them, but more than anything, it's convenience. That's why some of these organic juice places, I'm not talking about where it's loaded with a bunch of sugar and and just protein powders. I mean, organic juice bars are popping up out of convenience. People are wanting to a place to go just drink their vegetables for the day, and they don't have time to deal with sitting and eat a salad for 30 minutes. They don't have time for all that. So they want a quick and easy way to get their veggies in on a regular basis. Dr. Paul Thompson, he's the chief of cardiology at Hartford Hospital in Connecticut, said that exercise is a good way to reduce the chances of developing AFib in the first place. So if you're ever concerned about it, getting out and exercising can make a big difference. And he's the Thompson's an author of an accompanying journal editorial coming up recently on physical activity. And what's interesting is that a lot of programs are out there that say to promote weight loss, improve cardiorespiratory fitness, but they're not really targeted at helping atrial fibrillation, which is something that so many people struggle with. And I would say, just to add to that, really, if you're, if you're focused on keeping the heart healthy, if you're doing the right things like walking 30 minutes a day, five days a week, doing your 150 minutes a week or your 70 minutes of high intensity, see, those are the, those are the numbers. You've got to get that in. If you're not getting those numbers in, then you're missing out. Because the reality is, if you don't stay fit, if you don't do the work to stay healthy, the body will tear down. It will. It's not if, it might, it will. So you don't use it, you lose it. And that's why lifestyle is important. Your habits are really important. But atrial fibrillation really benefits from exercise, along with fruits and vegetables, your B-complex vitamins. And don't forget, dark leafy greens are loaded, chock full and loaded of these B vitamins that can make such an impact in your overall health. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Let's go to Margie. Hi, Margie. I would like to know uh, some information about osteoporosis and the best uh, diet for to deal with osteoporosis and, and, and how much calcium to take on a daily basis. Well, osteoporosis, you've got to look at it. It's just a softening of the bones. The bone doesn't get enough of the minerals that it needs, and that's really the main situation. You start off with what's called osteopenia, and that's kind of a light softening of the bones. Then it moves into where they're in more of a brittle state, and that's the osteoporosis. So the, the body just kind of moves in through that routine. 
and you just have to figure out exactly what to do with it. And, of course, if you do lab work, which I'm a huge fan of, if you get the lab work done, you'll find out exactly what your body needs. You'll find out if it has enough vitamin D. And vitamin D is a catalyst, I think, for all osteoporosis. If, we, if you don't handle that, you're really missing the boat. Has to happen. So you want to have someone, your physician, nutritionist, someone actually do some lab work and check and see what your overall numbers are. Because that's a key. Osteoporosis, I'll tell you one of the biggest keys is getting enough vitamin D. And your vitamin D levels need to be between, between about 70 and 90 on a blood test. If it's not, you can get it from the sun. You can do it in a supplement form. You can get it from things like mushrooms. Whole eggs have a lot of vitamin D and also a lot of calcium in there. But getting enough of those together is what makes a difference. Is again, osteoporosis is all about the other minerals too. Magnesium, don't forget about boron. I mean, there's quite a few that can make a difference. You just have to make sure you're getting enough vitamin D where it can absorb the other minerals that you're taking in through your healthy diet. I mean, that can all make a difference. And then other, your exercise. So walking at least 10 minutes a day, six days a week, I think you ought to go up to 20 if you can swing it. And then also, you want to look at mini trampolines. Mini trampolines, I'm telling you, are amazing. UrbanRebounder.com makes one that is a great way to go. And it helps keep the body strong, fit, and also keeps the bone density levels up. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer, Jay Patrick, engineer John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on the show. Together, we can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show. It helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Did you know you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, Check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.